En mijn maat DNA zit hier vandaag met Bantamweight Contender, Corey Sandhagen. Corey, first of all, how are you, man? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Thank you for taking the time for us. Yep. And uh, let's start immediately, man. You, you're now in the UFC. How is the UFC for you? The UFC is good. Uh, no complaints. Obviously, it's a lot better than fighting locally. Uh, the UFC takes care of you pretty good. Uh, so yeah, man, no complaints. I'm glad that we're able to fight through this kind of COVID stuff too. And, um, yeah, man, all, all is good in my life. Especially in this time. Yes. Like you say, uh, it's the COVID time. Um, you're, you're glad you're actually glad that you can fight at the moment because a lot of fighters don't fight. Mm -hmm. What, what is it different to fight for the UFC than for other organizations? I mean, uh, the guys on the team that aren't in the UFC, they don't know when they're going to fight next. You know, like, uh, I know Bellator is starting to come back a little bit. And then there's like other regional shows that are coming back a little bit, but not, not a lot of them. So, uh, I feel for those guys on the team that really have no idea when they're going to fight next. And, uh, I'm just really grateful that I'm able to right now. Yeah, that's good to hear. Um, you're now, uh, five and one at the UFC. Um, your first, your, your first, uh, uh, your first fights, first three fights were were, were actually uh, uh, submissions and KOs. Uh, then you got the decision with John Lineker. Again, a decision against Rafael Sunsal and then Aljamain Sterling. What happened? Yeah. <laughs> it was it was more of an experience mistake than I think it was anything else. Uh, It was, um, I didn't go in in a, in a headspace that uh, you should be in when you fight. Uh, you should, I, I mean, like, it's a fight, so you should be very intense. And I didn't have a lot of those uh, intense feelings going into that fight. I thought that it was maybe a, a good thing that I was as calm as I was. And uh, I just learned from it that when you go into a fight, you have to be ready for anything. And Aljamain did a great job taking advantage of that, and uh, all props to him. He, he came after me right off of the bat and uh, when I was in a really calm state, and uh, can't do that. <laughs> can't do that anymore. So uh, it's a lot of just fixing that, you know, like being able to put myself in a very intense state before sparring and then uh, have that translate into my next fight, which is uh, obviously a very dangerous fight. So I, I have to be... Uh, uh able to access that level of intensity and get in that headspace right before um which i'm excited to show that i can do and uh prove again that i i, I belong where i am right now yeah but what what was the, the 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 biggest mistake you made in the fight it was the headspace so it was before going headspace. into so uh okay It, I, I don't think, I mean, there was many technical errors that I made in that fight, but I think that they were made because I wasn't, I wasn't in a headspace to react really quickly. Um, I, I don't think a lot of people really understand the level of intensity that you get when you walk into the cage uh, and you stand across from someone that really wants to hurt you. That's, that's a, that's a pretty different feeling. And if you don't put yourself in a position to be ready for that before, Uh, you're going to have happen what happened to me and you're not going to do very well. Um, so yeah, I mean, that was, that was really, I, th I think why I lost. Um, and you know, they say that like 95% of it is mental. And, uh, I think that that's a hundred percent true. Um, so yeah, man, it just, just fixing that, you know, and like I said, it was an experience thing. I had never felt that calm before a fight. And so I didn't know whether or not to fix it or not to fix it. And, Now I know in the future that if I'm that calm, then I need to break myself out of that and get ready to go. And uh, so it was a learning lesson. It still hurts. You know, I lost a lot of nights of sleep over it, wishing that I could go back and change it. But uh, that's how you learn in this sport. You know, all lessons are learned really toughly. And uh, that's the nature of the game. What went through your mind after the fight? Uh, the same fight over and over again? Yeah, wanting to change it, you know, uh, especially because I know the mistake that I made pretty pretty quickly after the fight. So it was a lot of me wanting to go back and change it. Um, 
but yeah, man, just sad, you know, just sad, bummed out, feeling low on myself. Uh, because if you if you had won that fight, you probably would fight for the title, right? I would have, um, but you know, it'll would still have happen. been you would have been in a good position. I would have been in a good position, but uh, it's not like I'm in a bad position now. I'm fighting. No, the number true. Uh, and it's interesting, like uh, in this sport, you think that. You think that when you lose, every your entire career is going to crumble underneath you and this and that. And I mean, now I'm fighting the number one guy instead of the number two guy. So, I mean, things could change really quickly. Uh, and it's a, it's a weird sport, man. Like, you think some things are going to really set you back, and they might not, you know. And then there's other things that you think are really going to propel you forward, and they might not. So you just got to take it one fight at a time in this sport. It's, uh, it's a crazy game. You're a true contender. You're a legend. You're fighting Mar Marais. What do you think about him? Yeah, he's dangerous. Uh, I think he's one of the better guys in, in the in the UFC, not even just the sport, or not even just the division. Um, he brings a lot of danger into the fight, you know. Uh, I think that I bring in a, a decent amount of advantages against him. Uh, me and my coaches have a good game plan to beat him, so... Um, But not too without, much focus. Without telling your, your, your game plan, where are the, the, the gaps for him? Um, I don't think I want to say because I don't want him to know <laughs> sure, where, that's I, true. Where, where I'm going to try to uh, win the fight in areas that I don't think he's better than me at. But um, I will say that uh, a lot of the focus isn't really on Marlon right now. A lot of the focus is on me being the best me that I can be. Um, and then just little critiques for Marlon here and there, but definitely a very dangerous fight. One that I really, really need to show up for, uh, or else I'm going to get hurt. And, um, I, and I, I do not want to feel those feelings of losing again. So, uh, I'm going to do everything that I can to win. What are his strongest points? Do you think? I think he's, I think he's smart. Uh, I, I've been watching Marlon obviously for a long time now and, I think that every fight he looks better. Um, I think that he has big power, obviously. Um, and I think he's very athletic. So um, I'm fighting a really athletic, smart guy, you know, uh, who, who shows that he can get better and that he can improve and, and fix his mistakes from previous fights. So I'm really excited for the challenge. And uh, I have a lot of respect for, for Marlins uh, as a martial artist. Um, I think that when guys get better every single fight, that just goes to show that they're they're in the gym putting in a lot of work. And uh, I think he is, and uh, that's what I that's what I anticipate fighting. I, I anticipate fighting one of the best guys in the UFC and um, and doing my best, you know. Yeah, and uh, your time for the belt, 2021. 2021. That's it now. I that's think, it? yeah, but like I said, man, it's crazy. So like, uh, I, I, I don't even like to think about that too much because there's way too many factors that, that go into it. You know, like who, who knows, like if I, if maybe I'll knock Marlon out in five seconds and then fight for the belt, like how Jorge Masvidal beat Askren, you know, like there's yeah. just no, there's just no saying what could happen in this sport. So, uh, yeah, I would, I mean, I would like for 2021, uh, but like I said, man, like I think a martial artist really focuses on himself, and I think that uh, he just focuses on the day and what he can do during that day to get better, and uh, all the good things will happen if you just keep your focus in that area. Yeah, and Garvin is also back, of course. He's, mm -hmm. he's also fighting. He's fighting for the title for the flyweight, right? Yep, in November, I believe. Yeah, and if he wins that, he wants to fight for the bantamweight, right? Oh, really? Yeah, that might. Doesn't happen. he? <laughs> he probably does. Yeah. So, yeah, man. Like I said, and and I know, and I know where I am as far as like how much juice I have in the UFC. You know, um, I'm I'm working on getting some more juice. You know, and you you just have to have fights to do so. You have to build up your name, and that's just a part of it. You know. Uh, 
what what are you gonna you know like i'm not i i i don't like the idea of just sitting and complaining about like oh he deserves this he deserves this like i sp- i spent too much time in my past doing that and i'm just not gonna do it anymore and uh you know, I'll fight my best. I'll do my best. I'll build up my name. And I, and I really believe that, like, I'm one of the more skilled guys and better guys uh, in the UFC. And I think that um, if I just keep doing that, man, like, it's just a matter of time before my name is really big. And then when my name is really big, then I'll, I'll have the juice to kind of make a little bit or, or call the shots a little bit more than, I, than I'm able to right now. Your name is already big. You're, you're top five, man. Yeah, I'm not a Frankie or I'm not a Garbrandt or I'm not a, a Aldo or a TJ, you know, like those caliber guys, I feel like they kind of, they can call a little bit more of the shots than definitely I can. But uh, I, I am very happy with where I am, but uh, You're I, coming. I, know, I huh? You are coming to that I'm, top. I'm coming to the top.